Okay guys, beer bread, promise to make it easy for you. Something I fell in love with in uh, Austin, Texas of all places, and uh, now can be pretty much found anywhere as a good substitute to cornbread or, or anything else for barbecues. So uh, very quickly, what we need, all purpose flour, three cups, baking powder, otherwise known as chemical yeast, that will be a tablespoon. We're going to need a tablespoon of salt. Um, I have sea salt, I use it for everything. You can use any type of salt you like. Sugar, three tablespoons of sugar. Everybody loves sugar. We'll also need a stick of butter, which we are going to melt and I'll show you why. And baking tins. You could use one large one. I'm gonna use uh, four smaller. So I can uh, share with the neighbors. I usually um, don't like to eat everything that we make. And of course, you're gonna need two bottles of beer. One for the bread and one to drink while you make it. I'm gonna use Shinerbach here. It's one of my favorites. It's a, a local uh, Texas uh, brewery. You can uh, find it all over the United States. Great beer, uh, great place to visit, and it makes an outstanding bread. Before we get started, uh, make sure you get the oven uh, warmed up to 350. By the time we're done with this, it should be uh, ready to go. And uh, I'm going to use a separate bowl here, and uh, maybe I'll use the bigger mixer if I need it. But uh, what we're going to do is start by adding three cups of flour. So all purpose, we saw it, I'm using gold metal today. Really a decent product. You go, you want the to look just like that. Full, but not completely packed. So one, two, three. Now we're gonna do a tablespoon of baking powder. There's no actual uh, traditional yeast in here. This is a called chemical yeast. So it's gonna give us our rise in the bread. So again, one tablespoon, nicely filled, right in. Here we are, teaspoon of salt in the dry mix. And now we're gonna go with three tablespoons of sugar. So you're gonna to wanna to fill them just like that, right up to the top. And we go, one, two, three, easy. Now what we're gonna do is just take a spatula or whatever you have and mix up the dry ingredients here a little bit, get them well incorporated. I may actually go ahead and, and use the larger paddle mixer. If you have a handheld mixer, that's great. You can also do this by hand, but I don't like uh, getting dirty. And if we can make a job quicker and easier, why wouldn't we do that? So that looks like it's mixed pretty good. Let me go ahead and uh, get this into the larger bowl and then uh, we'll, we'll resume. So let's go ahead and get our butter out of here. Nice and melted, gonna be perfect, look at that. That is a whole stick of butter or half a cup, ready for action. So now what we're going to do is uh, get in our shiner or whatever beer you like. Again, this one is not too dark. Darker beers are a little bit sweeter. Um, if you're not a huge beer fan, uh, use a lighter beer. You know, maybe you could use like a Heineken Light or a uh, Bud Light or Michelob Ultra. But um, this beer is worth taking the place of water. So beer is 90% water anyway, so why not use something with flavor as opposed to just general regular water. I'm going to put this in here, put it on stir, which is really slow to start incorporating this. You pretty much want to run this until it's just incorporated. We really don't want to overwork this. While this is mixing, it's a great time to have a sip of that other beer. That looks good. Should be a, a little wet and it is, which is nice. Yeah, that's gonna be great. Just a quick disclaimer. Don't eat raw flour. Don't eat raw dough. 
I'm not a doctor. Use Google or call people who have uh, paid diplomas. I know it's a bad thing and I feel like I should tell you because the smell of this dough is going to be intoxicating. That I promise. Right on cue, the, the dough should be sticky and heavy. And it is, so we did a great job. We'll just clear the paddle here. Make sure we get it all into back into the bowl so that we could go ahead and transfer it to our pans. And we'll show you what to do with the butter and how we're gonna make these uh, beautiful breads. Looking good, looking perfect. Um, also as well, now would be a good time to prep our pans, our, our little cake pans that we're using here, our little bread loaf pans. Uh, you could actually put this whole thing in one 9 by 5 loaf pan and just slice it up yourself. But again, I'm going to share the wealth here, so we're going to put it in little pans. You can use butter to keep it from sticking. Those are non-stick pans already, but I backed myself up here with a little pan uh, with flour, baking spray. Pretty, uh, pretty good investment. Will save you a lot of time trying to get the the breads and cakes out of the various pans, uh, you know, as we go through and, and cook stuff together. What we're going to do is give it a spin just to make sure that it's it's mixed, and we're going to pour just a splash in the bottom here. You can always add in jalapeno, cheddar, you know, chop them up real fine. Gets really um, wide open for what you can do. And we know that this is a little bit thicker of a dough, so we just want to get it two thirds of the way full. This way it rises up nicely. There we go. So you, you want you want it about that high, right? About maybe a little bit more. Now what we're gonna do before we pop these in the oven, because it is a 350, is we're also gonna give the top just a hint of the butter. If you're thinking to yourself that uh, this is going to be a dry bread, you're wrong. There we go. Beautiful. Let's pop these in the oven. Uh, depending on the size of your pan, it could be 20 minutes or it could be, you know, 40 minutes. So what we're going to do is just watch it until it starts rising and getting a, a nice golden brown. And we're going to show you what that looks like. So open this up. We got the 350 clear racks. and give it a little a little check here looks like it's pretty done uh, it smells great in here you wouldn't believe it uh, you know I, I'm thinking about maybe I'll just start up another batch and I'll add in those chives or, or onions uh, some jalapeno any pepper is great I mean, chipotles guajillos Calabrian chilies, you know, whatever, whatever you want, uh, whatever you like, you can put in there. Um, I, I like things a little bit spicy, so, you know, that's fine. Cheddar cheese, any grated cheese will work. Uh, you know, queso fresco might be nice in, in the bread. And it's just a great starting point. And it is probably one of the easiest and best tasting recipes for beer bread that you're going to come across uh, hands down. And it's flexible, which is great. You know, change your beer types. This is a nice German beer. Use ale, use craft beers, uh, make it your own. That's the, the good news is if you stick to the ingredients, a bottle of beer, a stick of butter, three cups of flour, you know, some sugar and some salts, you can pretty much do whatever you want after that. It's just a wide open palate to, uh, 
you know, entertain. And you know what? You could also probably cook it in a cast iron too if you want. Get a little, get a little fancy, right? Um, yeah, if you like this video, thumbs up, share it. Uh, let us know what you want to see. Let us know if you've tried this. Let me know your recipes. Uh, I, I'm here to listen, learn, and to eat and taste and tell you all about uh, things involving flour, yeast, eggs, alcohol, pizza, barbecue, whatever I get my hands on. How about food, booze, and fun? That's what we're about here. Thanks for watching. Can you see the smoke coming off that hot? The best way to have beer bread is when it's warm. Mm. Get out of here.